here last month, right? When we mm -hmm. did the, the vegetarian meatloaf. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two things that my mom and I have really, really struggled with, and that's getting a good recipe for meatloaf and a good recipe for meatballs. And uh, there are so many, there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of recipes out there hmm. for vegetarian meatballs and vegetarian meatloaf. And I can tell you that we personally have tried a lot of them. And there's a lot of them out there that taste horrible. <laughs> Just because the recipe's on the internet does not mean it tastes good. Or even if it's printed in a cookbook, it doesn't mean it tastes good. And uh, so my mom and I, for probably most of my life, have said about trying to find a good recipe for those two things, the meatloaf and the meatballs. And uh, it means, like, for the meatloaf, it meant every Christmas and every Thanksgiving for, like, my entire life. And uh, with the meatballs, it meant, you know, every time I tried to make a meatball, any time during the year. Uh, we have had many that turned out spongy, or it turned out dry, or just, you know, had no flavor, like tasteless, or, you know, too chewy, or burnt, or, I mean, like, you name it, like, none at all. <laughs> And uh, about two years ago, I think, we had a customer at a restaurant, a special order meatballs. And she wanted them gluten-free, and she wanted them tough enough that they could handle the freezer. Okay. And uh, I was given like two weeks notice. So my mom and I went on a meatball frenzy. <laughs> We made so many meatballs, you cannot imagine how many recipes that we made and uh, threw away. <laughs> we didn't like, or, or just, you know, figure out another, something else to do with them, crumble them up or something because, you know, it didn't turn out right. And uh, I think in one day we baked like 20 different recipes of meatballs. Just trying to get the perfect meatball. It had like, this lady was very particular, she said, I want to be able to form it into a large meatball, you know, like, like, so one person could get one meatball per person, you know, she's like, I want a big meatball that has a really nice texture inside, and she's like, I want to buy them from you in January, and I'm going to put them in the freezer, and I want to serve them three weeks later, and, uh, like, that's a serious challenge, and, uh, this is the meatball we came up with, okay, <laughs> that's what you're eating, um, and uh, I can truthfully say it's it's a sum total of all of my mom's lifetime of cooking experience plus my lifetime of cooking experience combined with lots and lots of meatball experience to come up with this recipe the way it is. And uh, when we finally got it, we heaved a huge sigh of relief. We had to test it too, of course, because it's got to handle the freezer. And having something gluten-free that handles the freezer is very difficult. I had... I had a good meatball recipe that I liked. When you put it in the freezer, it'd just fall apart, you know? <laughs> or if you tried to bake it like this, you know, bake it for a half hour and then cart it for an hour across the country, you know, to serve in a potluck or whatever, it would just like disintegrate. And you know, by the time you got there, you had like a, a casserole dish <laughs> of meatball crumbs mixed with sauce, you know? <laughs> and uh, so this has been freezer tested, it's been tasted after the freezer, it's been baked, it's done everything to it, and it actually holds its form, tastes good, and uh, I have not found a way to destroy it yet. <laughs> so, Besides so eating this it. this is Christina's meatball <laughs> recipe. Um, and you've got a winner. <laughs> so after we mastered that recipe, then we decided we wanted to take the challenge of the meatloaf, and that was what you had last month. Because of all of our challenges with the meatball, we already knew some things not to do with the meatloaf. Um, but even as recent as this past Thanksgiving, our meatball recipe was a flop. I mean, meatball, excuse me, the meatloaf recipe for Thanksgiving dinner was a total flop. It was like, it looked pretty on the outside, but you cut into it and it was like spongy in the middle and the flavor was awful. And I was just like, Mom, what are we going to do? So we got to the day before the cooking class last month. And uh, 
I was like, we need to do meatloaf tomorrow for the class. Like, we need a recipe. <laughs> and uh, so we sat down, and instead of making 200 meatloafs like we've done with the meatballs, we decided to just sit down and brainstorm. So my mom and I sat down with, like, a bunch of meatloaf recipes that we'd already tried and failed <laughs> that we knew didn't work, put them all together, pulled our, our meatloaf, uh, excuse me, our meatball recipe here that we knew actually worked, started comparing things. And uh, after two hours of brainstorming on paper, we went to the kitchen and we made one meatloaf. And it turned out perfect the first time. And that's what you ate last month. So, but uh, like I said, that the meatball paved the way for your meatloaf last month. <laughs> it's the only reason I was able to do it. But... Uh, yeah, don't, don't be discouraged if a recipe doesn't turn out. It just means that you need to do some more playing around the kitchen. And it will come, I promise. Did the lady like it? The lady liked it, yes. And I was greatly relieved. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing I could have done better. <laughs> well, now, I would have thought the fish would make the perfect meatball. But when you create a loaf out of it, changes? Yeah, well... It has a higher moisture content, and it's got uh, different seasonings in it. Oh, okay. So the meatloaf, the base is very similar. You'll notice the base has tofu in it, it's got walnuts in it, it's got the gluten-free breadcrumbs in it. So some of the ingredients are similar to the meatloaf that we had last month. But the flavor is totally different. You'll notice um, hmm. uh, this doesn't have any sage in it. Uh, sage is one of your meatloaf. Uh, flavors. It doesn't have any um, or what other. It doesn't have any country style seasoning in it, which you can make this with country style, but it doesn't have any in it. Um, so it's less herby than the actual meatloaf. Um, and then also, like I said, the texture is different. So if you put it in a loaf pan and baked it, I can't guarantee you what it's going to turn out like. <laughs> but you can try. <laughs> tell me, tell me how it works. <laughs> Uh, but it is, it's a totally different texture. Uh, you'll notice the batter looks different. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the biggest difference in flavor is that we actually put this uh, meatball sauce in the meatballs, blend it into it, and so that gives more of a meatball flavor than a loaf. Uh, so, anyway. Italian flavor. Yeah, it's more Italian. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, that's enough talk. Let's show you how to make this thing. Now, the question is, where did I put the recipe? I saved myself one, and it is no longer. All right, I need another recipe. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, the first thing I need is my blender, which it looks like is not pulled out yet. This recipe, I actually made the meatball sauce, and it says, I made a mistake on your recipe, I already see it right now, uh, it says barbecue sauce. It's actually the meatball sauce, not barbecue sauce that I put in there. But uh, you could put barbecue sauce if you want it, it's just whatever flavor you want um, in that blender. You'll notice that first ingredient there, half cup barbecue sauce or ketchup, um, I use meatball sauce. So I actually made the meatball sauce and this both simultaneously. So that way the, the meatball sauce was cooking down. I was able to scoop a half a cup of it out while I was cooking and stick it in the blender while I was making the meatballs. <laughs> so, so you can actually make them on the same day if you want to do. So we need our meatball sauce, which I've already made now. Let's see. I have the right one. No, this is the one I want right here. So I put a half a cup in, right? In the blender. 
blender. And like I said, you can use ketchup, you can use our homemade ketchup, you can use spaghetti sauce, really whatever kind of flavor you want, that's the sauce you can put in here, okay? Uh, it's mainly just adding flavor to your cookie balls. And it's also adding liquid to help you blend that tofu. <laughs> so it's both. But just some kind of sauce. And I have literally used any kind of sauce I want. And uh, some kind of tomato sauce. Like I said, I've done spaghetti sauce, I've done ketchup, I've done meatball sauce, I've done barbecue sauce. Whatever, just a sauce in there is fine. <laughs> so the next is what? We need some oats. We need some oats, and I use the gluten-free oats. You can use whatever kind of oats. You can use quick oats, you can use rolled oats, old-fashioned oats, whatever kind of oats you want. That's why it just says oats, because it's going to be blended up anyway. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's quick or, or rolled. <laughs> going to be powdered by the time it's done. And how much am I putting in that? Half a cup. Half a cup. Okay. And then what else? Now you'll notice it calls for tamari or soy sauce or if you don't have any of those you can use your country style seasoning or whatever flavor you want. Two tablespoons. What I have is uh, the gluten-free tamari. That's also organic. Um, but you can use whatever you want. So you said two tablespoons, right? Mm -hmm. Two tablespoons. If you, don't, if you use the country style seasoning instead of tamari, that's obviously a dry instead of a liquid, you may have to add two tablespoons of water. That's also part of your liquid in the recipe. Okay, what else? Uh, the block of Tofu. Tofu. <laughs> So I like to use uh, the water pack tofu. Um, I try to find organic, non-GMO, whatever uh, tofu that I can find. And you want firm. You don't want silken or soft or whatever. You want the firm tofu because that's going to give the best texture. But if you don't have water pack, you can use the other kind of tofu. It will still work. It might be slightly different. Where's something I can eat wet? I guess the pot is going to be my sink for right now. <laughs> so, you should remember from last month, what are you supposed to do after you drain the tofu? You wash it off. Don't you? Rinse it, and then what? You use a towel to get all the moisture off of it. Well, on this one, you don't have to. You just want to smell it. Remember that? Do you remember why you want to smell it? See if it's fresh or See if good. it's fresh or good. That's right. If it smells like rotten yeah. eggs, if it smells like rotten eggs or sour milk, it's starting to get a little off. If it smells like manure, it's gone. <laughs> okay. And it will. It will smell like manure if it's gone. All right, let me rinse this out. And I just break it up a little bit. Alright? So what's next? I blend it, right? Is that it for in this thing? So we're going to blend it up. Well, let's see. Why is it not turning out?
So that's blended. So now we need our dry ingredients, right? <coughs> Here's our dry ingredient mixing bowl. And what's the first thing we need for dry ingredients? Two cups of breadcrumbs. Okay. Now the question is, where are they? This looks like them. Yep. So, two cups of breadcrumbs. And obviously, I didn't make you have to watch me make breadcrumbs, but I just simply throw slices of gluten-free bread in the blender or food processor and grind it up. <coughs> Your breadcrumbs. You want soft breadcrumbs, not toasted, not toasted, seasoned. You want the soft breadcrumbs. And you could use regular bread. <clears throat> you can use homemade bread or gluten-free, either one. And it, it works. My mom was worried that maybe it would be a different ratio if you use our gluten-free bread versus homemade breadcrumbs. But I've used the bread crumbs interchangeably and not had to change anything on the recipe. At least with my homemade bread or my homemade gluten-free bread. So I haven't tried it with store-bought, but as long as it's whole grain, you should be okay. <laughs> so what's next? One cup of toasted walnuts. All right, and those, let's see, where are they? Here they are. Those you want chopped really fine, kind of like we did for the meatloaf. Um, so you can see how fine they are. They're like nut crumbs. They're not flour. They're actually chunks, but they're like crumbs. So if you don't have a food processor, I just put them on a cutting board with a big butcher knife and just keep chopping them until they're nice and small. But you want them fairly fine. You can see they look like breadcrumbs. <laughs> How much was it? One cup? One cup. Okay. Well, this is a one cup jar, so we'll just put the jar in. Alright. What else goes in here? A tablespoon of dried parsley. Okay. This is our flavor. Dry tablespoon. Tablespoon of parsley. Teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay. All right, what else? A third cup of dried minced onion flakes. Okay, that dehydrated minced onion. Once again, um, let's see where it's here. <clears throat> Just like we did it in the meatloaf. That dehydrated minced onion, when it hits the moisture, it rehydrates and it helps hold it together. And also it gives it some chewy texture um, when it rehydrates. So you do not want to replace that with fresh onion. You need to use <coughs> dehydrated onion. Do you sell that here, Tiffany? Um, the minced onion? Let me it's not granules, it's the next size larger. How much of this am I putting in? One third. One third cup. Okay. No, not okay. So they don't have it here, but uh, they do have it at Kroger. Um, or if you want it in bulk, I have it at the restaurant as well, in bulk jars. And she could probably order it if you wanted a whole pound. <laughs> Okay, so after the onion, make the dehydrated minced onion, and then there's what? Fourth a cup of, what is it, marshroom? Does it say fourth cup? Fourth teaspoon. Oh, fourth teaspoon. teaspoon. Oh, yeah. Marjoram. All right, marjoram is this little bitty green herb uh, that has a flavor only like marjoram. So I'll put it in and I'll pass it around so you can see what it smells like. But um, I'm using that instead of sage. Uh, for the flavor in this recipe. You said quarter teaspoon, right? Quarter teaspoon. Okay. So here, I'll pass it around and let you smell it. It has a very pleasant smell and it's used in Italian. Okay. It's also used um, in other savory dishes as well. You don't use very much, but it adds a very distinct flavor. Okay, so after marjoram, then we have our 
Our salt, right? <laughs> Onion powder. Are we missing onion powder? Oh, one, yeah, we are. One teaspoon of onion powder. Oh, that's important. That would be a problem if we skipped that. Okay. One teaspoon of onion powder. And then what else? One tablespoon of nutritional, nutritional yeast. yeast. And then that's everything, right? <laughs> Okay. I was looking at the wrong recipe. That was my problem. I'm glad you're keeping me straight. Okay. So we have all of our dry ingredients put together. So we just take those and we mix them up. So you'll notice with the meatball recipe, we had lots of fresh onion and lots of celery. There's no celery and no fresh onion in this. It's all dehydrated. Um, in the meatloaf, we also had the dehydrated onion too, um, but you have all that fresh onion and celery, which gives it more of a meatloaf flavor. Um, the meatballs are easier. I didn't have to chop anything. <laughs> so we just have our dry ingredients, and now we pour our blender mixture into the dry ingredients, and it's ready to form into meatballs. Let me see, where's my spatula? It's very simple. The most time consuming part is making your uh, meatball sauce. And of course that depends on what sauce you want to put on it. This would be good with the cheese sauce on it. Oh yeah, they'd be good with <laughs> cheese sauce. I mean, they're good by themselves. They're good with um, sweet and sour sauce. Uh, they're good if you wanted to make your, um, uh, they would probably be good with that sauce we put on the meatloaf, the salsa and grape jam. Uh, that's also a common meatball sauce. Uh, what else do I have on here? I mean, even spaghetti sauce is good on them. <laughs> they're good with just about anything. So, our uh, tofu mixture is orange because of that tomato we put in there. to hold it together. So now the fun part is mixing it all together. <laughs> and when you first mix it, it looks really, really soupy. But have no fear, as it sits for about five minutes, it starts absorbing that moisture and uh, turns really, really thick, and then you're like, oh, wow. So I'll mix this up, and then I'll show you what it looks like. you see it and that's when it's done it just looks like this thick gooey batter <laughs> so the secret is and unfortunately I don't have a cookie sheet here with me so maybe I'll use a plate and I'll take them home and bake them anyway there's no oven here but you got it <laughs> yep right here this is your secret, yeah. an ice cream scoop. Um, and depending on what size you want, well, it depends on what size of ice cream scoop, right? But what you have here is this ice cream scoop right here. I think it's like an inch and three quarters across. Mm -hmm. um, and so you just take it, make it flat, put it on. 
All right, so I didn't even um, bother spraying the cookie sheet. I just put parchment paper on the cookie sheet and just dropped them right on. It goes very quickly. And believe it or not, with this size, this batch will make 30 meatballs. So uh, one batch made one casserole dish. So I did a double recipe to do the two casserole dishes. But yeah, and they're very... Very easy to put on. You don't even have to bother forming a bowl. You just need one of these. Okay. <laughs> if you don't, you'll just have to use a spoon and drop it on. Um, and you can just drop it on and they'll just be, you know, little mounds. Like, like a, a, dough, a ball of cookie dough. Yeah, like a ball of cookie dough. And some people, they like it more smashed like patties. So you can just take a, a wet spoon and just, you know. I like I think they're prettier as mounds, right? Mm -hmm. So another thing that you can do with these, especially leftover meatballs, if you had spaghetti and meatballs and you got some leftovers, you can make yourself a meatball sandwich with it. So some people like to get, you know, hoagie buns and make like a meatball sub with it, uh, with cheese and tomato and lettuce. Uh, or you can put it in like a pita pocket, um, use it just like a, a little patty in a pita pocket with uh, tomato and lettuce. or. Um, or my dad, he would just like take it and smash it on a slice of bread, <laughs> whatever you want. But it's great. Uh, and like I said, they freeze beautifully after they're baked. So what I do is I just bake them on the cookie sheet like this and then put them in a plastic container and stick them straight in the freezer. And then whenever I want to serve them, I just pull them out of the freezer, let them thaw for whatever sauce I want to put over them. And it only takes 30 minutes to warm them in the oven. Hmm. So, uh, they are so versatile. You can make a giant batch of them, put it in the freezer, and you have meatballs anytime you want them. Uh, unexpected company, they'll think you slaved away in the kitchen, and you just, yeah. you know, cook spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, it's a lot of fun and uh, so easy to do. So, I probably don't need to show you how to make the meatball sauce. Uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. You just want to chop the, the key is chopping the onion and garlic really, really, really fine. So just like you do with the walnuts, you want to take your, your uh, knife, and I always do a knife. I don't bother with anything else. For, for my meatball sauce, I really like to chop it fine with a knife. So I just take a big knife and just chop it really, really small <coughs> onion and put that in uh, your uh, pan. And you can saute it with a tablespoon of water or if it's a juicy onion with nothing at all, um, or if it starts burning, if you need to put oil, you can, however you like to saute. Just saute your onion. And it says to saute the onion and garlic together, but I like to throw the garlic in at the very end. When the onion is almost done cooking, just throw that garlic in and mix it up. And uh, so while the onion is simmering on the stove, then I put the rest of the ingredients in the blender. So it's one can of diced tomatoes and then all your seasonings um, and some tomato paste. And I blend that up. And then as soon as the onions are done cooking, I just pour my blender mixture right into the onions. Oh, yeah. And uh, then it's instantly boiling, <laughs> which is really nice. Uh, it makes, um, let's see, I think it makes one, just over one quart. Just over one quart. Uh, and uh, so the secret is, of course, then I just let it simmer for about 20 minutes or so while I started chopping everything else for my meatballs. <laughs> but um, the secret to doing it like this, so nice and saucy, I thin down that meatball sauce <coughs> with the same amount of water, one to one ratio. So in this jar, I had meatball sauce to here. I filled the rest with water. It looks like tomato juice. Mm -hmm. You pour a little in the bottom of the pan, put your meatballs down, and pour the rest over the top. You'll use the whole quart for a dish of meatballs, or almost a quart. Um, and uh, I just pour it until it looks like they're floating in tomato juice. Right. And then I put it in the oven and bake it for 30 minutes, and they absorb all that. And the little bit that's left in my jar that I didn't put on the meatballs, I pour on like you saw me do just before serving to rehydrate them back up again. Um, so don't don't use that sauce straight. Uh, if you're baking the meatballs in it, dilute it down. 
So you'll have to write that down because I didn't put that instructions on there. But diluted half, half water, half, half uh, meatloaf sauce. So any other questions on that? Well, I'm going to turn the timer over.